Hey! If you've heard of Scrivener, but its complexity kind of intimidates you, then you're in luck. I'm going to be breaking down Scrivener into little digestible bites so you can maximize this software to write amazing stories. Hey friends, let's talk about Scrivener. Today we're going to focus on the view menu. And by talk, I mean I talk and you leave comments down below. Ask me questions or tell me about your favorite Scrivener features. The view menu, which is right here. In here we can see a bunch of options for um, viewing your documents. <laughs> and you can show certain things or hide certain things. And then we'll also talk about the three different views right here, the document, the corkboard, and the outline. The three view modes, document, corkboard, and outline can also be accessed over here. So you don't have to click on the menu itself. So it's document, corkboard, and outline. But from here, so document is the view that we're in right now that you can see here. This is the, the where you type, where you do your actual typing. The corkboard looks like this. And then the outline view, which is my favorite view. Those are our three different views. Scrivenings is different from what we just saw, right? So we just saw document versus scrivening. So document versus scrivenings. Document is when you have a single scene selected over here and then scrivenings will be the option if you have multiple, if it's nested. Oops, scrivenings, see? So this has these nested sub scenes under it. So we get a scrivenings. And then if it's just a single document, we get the document view. All right, so moving down, hide binder. So I've got, this is the binder over here. I've got it showed, you can hide it. And away it goes. I'm gonna show it because I like the binder. I like having it. You can also hide the binder right here. You can do a lot of stuff that is in the view menu right over here. Show collections. So we've kind of touched on collections before. I haven't really gone into a ton of detail. Collections are basically like saved, super searches. So this is where you would be able to see them. View and the inspector. So the inspector is this panel over here and we can hide it here. We can also hide it and show it with this little blue button right here. Editor layout. And the editor is this thing in the middle here, your actual typing. So hide the header, That's that goes away. And so showing the header, and the header is just this guy. So you're seeing, um, this is also where you can split your screen. You can go back and forth from scene to scene here. Uh, but if you don't like that, just hide it. Hiding the footer. Footer is the, um, the zoom, and you can go to a certain page in your manuscript using this button, your word count, your page count, and so on. Right now it is not split. I can choose to split it horizontally or split it vertically. Or I can choose this button. So you click here and it splits. If you hold down option, and, that, and again, I'm on a Mac, so I'm not totally sure what it is on Windows, whatever the Windows equivalent to the option key is. If you hold down option, like you see right here, it is horizontally, the, the line is horizontal. And I hit option and it's vertical horizontal option vertical. So click on that and it becomes vertical instead of horizontal. But if you forget how to do that, you can also just do that right here in this area. So swapping editors is just, so I've got A on the left and B on the right. I'll select A and if I come in here and say swap editors, it has switched A to the right and B to the left. So if you've got two documents up and you want them in opposite windows rather than closing and clicking and clicking and opening and closing and everything you can just go view swap and they'll just pop and back and forth the copy holder position and in order to get to the copy holder position you actually have to go to the navigate menu open in copy holder and so this screen that has just popped up this is the copy holder and you can see the kind of the difference here um, the regular editor looks like this it's, i've got my ruler up and i've only got this one toolbar on the top and the copy holder has an extra one right here. So we can actually pop it out 
into its own little thing. Open and copy holder. And you see the copy holder popped up on the right. So this is where we set where we want it to pop up. It's checked for the right right now, but if I want it to come up on the left, that's where I would change it versus the top and the bottom if we're doing the split. So if you select top or bottom, it will automatically horizontally split rather than vertically split. And then close, copy holder. Bye, copy holder, see you later. Next down on the menu is the text editing. Yay, text editing. So hiding the format bar, and that's where you choose your font, your font size, color, etc. cetera. Uh, we don't wanna get rid of that though, that's, that's bonkers. You, you need that. And then the ruler. So the ruler is command R, which is how I usually get it because I always forget that it's in this menu, but this is where you will find the ruler if you forget command R. So hide that ruler versus show that ruler. Show titles in Scrivenings is checked. So that means I click on here. There's my title, books, books, scene, scene, scene A, scene A. But if I come in here, I want to get rid of that or I want to get it if you don't have it show titles and then they're gone. So it's only the text and not the actual titles themselves. And okay, we'll check that. And when you've got titles checked, you can only show Scrivening's titles for folders rather than individual scenes. So books is a folder, but scene is not a folder. So books stayed scene and scene A did not. Show invisibles, and these are these little guys, these paragraph markers mostly is what will pop up, but then um, if you look real close, you can squint and you can see this little dot in between, and that's the space. So some people like these, these drive me nuts. My husband always types with these, and I don't know how he does it, but that's how you display them if you want. Hide invisibles and show markup. Comments, the entire comment goes away, the coloring and everything goes away. And with the footnotes, that little box is still there, but it deletes out the hyperlink. Show page view. So right now I am in probably what you've got when you first open up your Scrivener, and this is just the standard Scrivening's slash document view. But if you want it to look more like a page, like, um, like a Microsoft Word page, come down here to text editing and show page view, or you can do Option Shift Command P, or just click on it right here. So show page view, and then it shows more like a Microsoft Word page, if that makes you happy, if that gives you comfort <laughs> having those margins. And there's also in the preferences menu, there's a way to adjust these shadows and everything if, if you really wanna do that too. I'm not gonna do that today, but just so you know, that is an option. You can do two pages across. So as you are typing, you can kind of see what your two page spread will look like. Use the vertical layout like that. That's, there we go. If you are going to be printing something vertically, this is how you can see what that will look like. Line numbers is unavailable in page mode. So let's hide the page view and then come back in here, show line numbers. And you see over here, we've got paragraph numbers. And if any of you are uh, have ever gotten past pages or proofs or anything from an editor, this will look familiar to you because these will pop up in those on the, usually it's in the left margin, you'll have numbers that tell you which paragraph you're talking about. And this makes it easy for the editor when they're saying, hey, you know, this line in paragraph 11 is kind of weird. And so you as the author don't have to count one, two, three, four down the line. It's done for you over here. So that is how you make them show up. And then only count every fifth line is an option as well. So you don't have to have all of them. It will just round up to the two fives. All right, show compiled footnote numbers in Inspector. This is for after you have compiled and all the footnotes have been kind of like um, counted and accounted for, they will be numbered and they'll show up in the Inspector with a number, but I don't think, I haven't compiled this, so it's not gonna do that. After, after you compile and you've compiled your footnotes and whatever and exported and everything, then this will show up over here to make it easier for you to refer back, I guess, when you are coming back through to edit. This will slow down your compile if it's on, so just make sure that it's off before you compile. And then if you have it on, you can choose for it to prompt you before it does that, so it reminds you that it's happening. This is for 
all my ADHD folks out of their focus. And it's off right now. Do I need to put it in? Let's see. Okay, view, text editing, focus, off. Okay, so let's say I only wanna focus on, like go line by line. I'm just writing line by line. I'm not allowing myself to edit things or anything like that. So I'm gonna click line and everything gets kind of grayed out except for the line that I'm working on. So it makes it very clear where I'm supposed to be. Or I can say I want in the paragraph, which is gonna look the same because I've got, got all these little single lines. There you go, there's a paragraph. Then typewriter scrolling centers wherever your cursor is to the middle of the screen. Now, moving into PDF display. If you import a PDF, this is going to be how you view it. And I don't have any PDFs imported, so I can't really show you exactly. But if you've got a PDF that you import and it's looking kind of weird, the view PDF display is how you're going to kind of fiddle with it. So having its actual size or sizing it to fit whatever your editor is, single page versus facing pages, and then having a continuous PDF or you can have it separated out into its page break. So this is that menu and where you will find those options. Okay, so now the corkboard options. Let's get into the corkboard from here, okay. And view, view, corkboard options, cards across. How, how wide do you want your corkboard to be? And this will determine the size of your cards too. So if I click 10, they're tiny, little teeny tiny cards. Um, or you can do an auto fit, which is what mine initially was. It's this kind of this size, but you can make them whatever size you want. And arrange by labels is the labels down here. These, these things, you will arrange them that way. And you can also do that down here with this little button and arrange by label layout. And so if you have it arranged by labels, you can then arrange it in rows, columns, or in a grid, but my grid is grayed out for some reason, but you can also do rows like this. Show label colors along edges, and that is this little strip right here. So if we turn that off, there you go, away it goes. And show status stamps, and that's this in the background. Done, revised, revised, and you can, indicate those, the status is right here. So that can be your stamp back there. Show keyword colors. Keywords, let's see, over here, we did it. So here are our keywords. Oh, stop it, why are you being like this? Um, so if I select this one, I've got these keywords selected and then those colors show up right here. Show card numbers. I mean, I feel like that's pretty standard. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. So we've got our numbers that show up. Numbering per section is when, if a corkboard has multiple, like a stack, I guess, the numbering will be restarted for each different stack. It doesn't look any different for me. I'm sure that's just because I don't have it set up right, but I don't know if set up and stuff, whatever I want to deal with it. Okay. Show blank cards as ghosts. So any cards that don't have a title, a synopsis, and a main text, will be hidden from the corkboard. So if I turn off the card numbers and I create a new thing, that's what it looks like because there's no title, there's no text, there's no nothing anywhere. There's a scene here, it's completely empty and you, there's so many possibilities. And then the final corkboard is how to arrange your cards right now. So free form is just being able to drag them anywhere, put them wherever you need, or we can do snap them to a grid. So the grid pops up and you can kind of drag them. And if I drag it to like the middle of the square, it will snap it to be at the corner of the square. Commit to free form order. And this is whatever I've ordered my cards as on here, I will order my manuscript like that. So that's what commit to freeform corkboard order is. And 
So if I've rearranged them and I like the way that they're arranged, I can choose to come in here and it will re redo the binder. Alrighty, so that is all of the corkboard options. And all right, let's, let's go to the outliner. So clicking on my outliner, the best view. So all of these are just what is displayed in here. So right now I've got my title with synopsis and icons displayed with no numbers though. So if I wanna click on numbers, just adds that in here. Um, label status section, so just everything that you could possibly have. I set up before these, these are custom metadata that I set up in a different video, which I will link um, so you can go see how to do that. Or, and um, also you can center your content within your outliner. So instead of having it all left justified, you can put it all right in the middle so it's right there. You can also do all of that display stuff that was in here. You can do that by clicking on this little arrow and then all of this will show up too. And it's just as easy as checking boxes. And then I kind of like this way better because this menu doesn't go away when you click on stuff and the this menu does. So it's kind of, you have to keep reopening this one, but with this one, you can just da -da 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 all over. To make, like I said, I made these myself. So I come into custom columns and that's how you do your custom metadata, but it's a different video, okay. So that's pretty easy. The outliner is just showing different things. It doesn't really go into much other detail. And using fixed row height is when you have your synopses right here and you don't want your rows to be like huge. So you can set, you can fix the row type. So everything will be, will match that row that you have clicked on. If you want everything to be three rows, it all is regardless of whether it has text. If you want it all to be one or 10 or whatever, this is how you do that. Oh, okay. Take it away. okay, next use label colors in. And I already said labels are these down here and it's below my thing. There we go. So here's all your labels and I've got them colored like this and you can make as many labels as you want. You can just keep going. So I set up my plot beats for my labels, but you can set them to be whatever you want to do. And to add, you just click that plus sign. So using label colors, and I've got them in the binder, in my index cards, my outliner row, and my Scrivening's titles, because I love colors. And the way, so if I, I uncheck this, then the in the binder, it'll be this little dot. But if you come down here, show as background color, then it, Back, it colors it in the background. So watch the icons over here. Click the icons. And when you have the icons clicked on here, it takes away that whatever color there they are in the icons menu. So these went to white. Everything went to white versus blue and the scissors are colored a little bit. And then the, the orange of the characters and stuff so that you only, the only colors you have over here are your label colors, you don't have anything else. Okay, zoom, zooming in and out. You gotta be selected in a scrivening slash document view for that. And if you're an old lady like me, having it on 125 is helpful for your old crone eyes. <laughs> zooming can also be done by holding down command and then the carrots over. So carrot to the right is zooming in, carrot to the left is zooming out. And then you can also zoom down here. Oh, it's not gonna show, okay, you can zoom right here. So you don't have to make your font huge, you can just zoom in and it will adjust. So the more you zoom, the more you zoom. Let's look at it like this. All right, so I'm at 125 right now, but if I, if I go up to 400, like I can't zoom side to side or I can't like scroll side to side because it will, adjust the text down for me. So I don't have to try to go side to side. So right now, this is dialogue, I love dialogue. This is two lines and watch what happens. Here, let me click on it so maybe I can stay here. If I go to 125, it's all one line now. So it will adjust for you. So even if you're zoomed in super close, you, don't, you won't have to like go side to side in order to read your stuff. And when we come into other, you can type in if you want it to be 123, because you're quirky, you can do that there. I'm gonna be in my outliner, view, outline, 
And if I wanna see all of the synopses of everything, I can click expand all and it will, it will pump everything out. And that's also like, I have these sub menus hidden and then I go to view, expand all, all that come out. And then I can collapse all. And then let's see, I'm gonna expand them out again. I'm gonna click on this one. And then I can do collapse all to current level, which means anything that is below this level in the binder will get collapsed, will come in. So if I only wanna collapse in sub sub menus and not sub menus, that's how I do it. And I don't have any sub sub stuff, so I can't show you, but that's, that's, that's how. And show sub document counts in binder. Everything over here that has sub documents, now you've got a little number. So more books right here has one. Books has 13, oh dang, because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, et cetera. And it's, if that is something that you would like, that is how you do it. And hoist the binder. You will only focus on one part of the binder. So you, whatever you are selected on, the container you are selected on, it will show that container's stuff, but not anything else. So if I, for example, I'm gonna unhoist. So we see everything, just all of this, so busy, there's just tons of crap. And I'm in, We'll go to part one books. Part one books are great. And we will hoist, hoist. So now I've got everything that was under books are great, which is the books folder, more books, books, comic books, and novels. So all of these folders and their contents are within the books are great part. So they all show up. But if I only want things that are in the books folder, I'm going to I got on hoist first and then I'm selected into books and then I'm going to yeah, hoist again and everything is gone except for just the books folder. So this is if you're if you have a really huge binder with lots of world building and character profiles and all that in it and you're having a hard time finding things to um, finding your folders that you're writing in, then this is a good way to kind of kind of clear that clutter and only focus on what you need at the moment. Entering full screen mode, and I only film like part of my screen, so it's not gonna be the whole thing. So this is, you know, good distraction, um, get rid of her. To get out of this mode, you can go to view, exit full screen, or command shift F. And I don't like using full screen because I do like using the copy holders and I just line those up next to like kind of against the desktop next to my Scrivener so that I've got references right there to glance at because if I have to go looking for references I will get distracted because I have ADHD and I will go off on a tangent and then come back three hours later and be like oh yeah I wanted to do that whoops and all my time is gone and then composition mode is like this and again I've got my screen hidden but it's so it's all black on this side and it's black on the other side over here too. So this is even more, nope, can't see anything, no distractions. It's all just, it's just your words and then like the blackness. So in preferences, you can toggle in here kind of what you want it to look like. You can change the background color and you can change how this shows up, the menu up here. And to get out, it's the same as before exit composition mode, or you can do, so if this one is shift, sorry, if it's command shift F, this is command option F. And we're back. Tabs, um, kind of like in Chrome, when you have multiple tabs and you can kind of click between them, that's what this is. So we're showing the tab bar and that's right here, which is nothing but quick start right now. If I was working on a different project, I would go to window and then merge. So this is my my like script for my YouTube videos because I will forget how to, ever, you know, if you watch my videos, all of my intros and all of my extros, outros are the same. And that's because I have them written down on a little script. And if I don't have them written down, I will forget them. And I will just sit here and be like, 
hey, it's, J it's your boy, whatever, and I won't, um, I won't know what to say. So I have them written down. <laughs> so if I merge all windows, and now we see up at the top in the tab, I have my, my quick start, which is my kind of what I show you all how to do Scrivener in, and then my YouTube series is over here. So if you want two projects open at the same time, this is how you do that. And then you wanna get rid of one, you just click the X and off it goes. But the reason why I bring this up now is not because the window menu is a different menu for a different day, but that is what that means. So the tab bar, and that's how you utilize it. You can bring multiple projects into one Scrivener window and have multiple projects in one window. And be, be aware that if you've got two big robust projects and you've got them both open at the same time, you're gonna have some speed issues. So just keep that in mind when you have a bunch of different projects all running at once. And this is grayed out now, but if I had multiple tabs, it would pop up and I could show all tabs. All right, so now I can hide the toolbar, which is that um, up at the very top. Let's show the toolbar. So it's this bar and you can hide that or you can customize it. We and here's all the cool stuff you can put up on this top bar. If you, you find yourself always struggling to remember where typewriter mode is, you can just throw that up there and then you can click. If you're having a problem with the mobile sync, you can just throw that up there. So there's or, you know, if you never use whatever this one is, I don't know. You never use this button, so you're like, eh, I'm gonna get rid of it. Oh, quick reference. This is where you can kind of toggle with that menu up there, which is handy. And I think that's all, oh my gosh, it's a long video. Yeah, that's it, okay. <laughs> oh no, I closed out my, <laughs> my, my thing open. How many of these freaking videos have I done? And I still don't know what to say. <laughs> Okay, so that's it. Yay, Oof, that's a robust menu. That's the view menu. I'm all done. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. And I hope you learned something new about the view menu. If you like this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Wash your hands, Black Lives Matter, and have a nice day.